Kanye West and the Utopia Trap. The culture war is over. The Marxists lost. They were always going to lose. Because cultural Marxism cannot sustain itself without feeding off of other people's wealth. It's a parasitic ideology that first consumes the host, then drives it mad to destroy everyone else. After the 2016 election of Donald Trump, when Kanye West had his famous meltdown on stage and walked off during a show, it was a pivotal moment. Now, many saw Enfant Terrible throwing a tantrum and crying for attention, but I didn't. I heard a man whose worldview was in flux and causing him real pain. The kind of pain that changes a man. It's a moment when you look at what you've built and see it for what it is. In Kanye's case, it wasn't his art that was the problem. It was the reaction to it, the system supporting it. He saw the politics and structure of the music industry rightly as just another mechanism of social control. He railed against radio, MTV, and the rest of the distribution system. He saw his place within it, how it was driving artists and fans apart, to bicker and argue while the real power lay with those controlling and stoking the conflicts. And he torched it, willingly, with an almost hyper self-awareness. Now, fast forward to this June when Kanye emerges from his personal 40 days in the desert and tweets out, as Scott Adams said, seven words that changed everything. Quote, I love the way Candace Owens thinks. And Scott's right about that. Kanye West put paid his promise to his fans that he pissed off in November 2016 that he would be a change agent. That he wasn't going to go along to get along, stay quiet, be a good boy, and reap the benefits of a system he saw as corrupt and corrupting. Now, like Kanye or hate him, in this moment, you have to respect him. Because what he did goes far beyond red-pilling a large swath of the American black community about how the Democrats take them for granted and use them for their own purposes. What he did was throw the entirety of cultural Marxism into the ash bin of history. He just took a massive dump on the entire canon of identity politics. And then he lit it on fire and threw it on the gatekeepers of culture's front door. I don't know how much of Kanye's original rant was calculated performance art, but I don't care. As an economist, I've trained myself not to dispense with such nonsense. Because you don't measure a man by his intentions. You measure him by his actions. This is one of the fundamental issues of identity politics and Marxism. The insistence that intentions are more important than consequences. Cultural Marxists wrap themselves in the moral high ground, stating that their intentions are noble and selfless. They are putting the community over themselves while denigrating those honest enough to admit that they act for themselves first and the community second. And it is their defense mechanism for deflecting criticism when any of their plans fail. At least our intentions were pure. But as Ayn Rand rightly pointed out, altruism doesn't exist. One helps another person because it satisfies their own needs first and the object of their help second. Some people just get immense satisfaction in helping others. And there's nothing immoral about that. It doesn't taint their good works with the stain of profit. It simply is. So I don't care if Kanye did these things for purely selfish reasons or not. I don't think he did. But he could be the kind of malignant narcissist his critics accuse him of being, most of whom today, ironically, side with the cultural Marxists. I just know that whatever his reasons, he destroyed the narrative of minority victimization, and he did it with the precision of a brain surgeon cutting out the ideological rot in millions of brains with seven words. Now, as a writer, I'm really jealous, but as a human being... I'm eternally grateful. This is why the culture war is over. It'll take some time, but this period of history is the culmination of more than a 100 years of Marxism as the dominant political ideology. Their long march through the institutions is just complete in time to see all of these institutions 
fail. Now, they aren't failing all at once. A pension system here, a country's small hyperinflation there, but they are failing. Why? Because central planning in all its forms is beset with what Hayek called the knowledge problem. And in short, it is that the most important knowledge, that of time and space, relative to the individual's actions, is unknowable to the central planner. And that propagates errors in policy, which ultimately is capital destructive. It is why global debt is out of control. It's why the central planners made the Faustian bargain with the banking cartel to create debt-based money to fund their utopia. The Marxists get the wealth distribution, but at the costs of the banker's vig. And everyone else suffers. As we approach the moment where we finally reach the end of the societal road paved with debt, these institutions will fail more rapidly. Cultural Marxism is, like all collectivist ideologies, utopian. By divorcing intentions from consequences, it not only insulates itself from criticism, but sells itself as a path to a higher plane of spirituality, which it cannot deliver. It justifies ends with means that are abhorrent and, like all psychopaths, blames its victims. It's never their fault when people are starving in the streets, throwing acid on infidels, and selling aborted fetuses to the highest bidder. No, basic welfare is a right. Open borders, a right. Abortion, a right. And that's the utopia trap. The idea that we can make heaven on earth by appropriating the life and time of another person through enforced communal responsibility. Now, on the other hand, is the staunch individualist who understands that life is suffering, time is precious, and death inevitable. So no matter what bad decisions we as individuals make, they are still better than the ones the willfully ignorant and the ideologically blinded make for us. So as the culture war grinds to its inevitable conclusion, we humans will emerge from this foray into mass insanity known as Marxism smarter, just like we did when we overthrew the high priests of the sun gods and the divine rights of kings. And if we have people like Kanye West and, yes, Donald Trump to be our Loki figures gleefully blowing holes in their utopian dreams, so be it. Because honestly, who is better suited for that job? <laughs> 